Hi, I'm Chris. I'm one of the internal medicine vets here at Veterinary Specialist Services. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about swallowing disorders with particular attention to how we might change our feeding regime for a dog who has a problem with their swallowing or ability to keep food down. Normally when we swallow, we consciously move food to the back of our mouth. But once food moves to the back of the mouth, swallowing is actually a reflex where the food being there will then stimulate a contraction to move food all the way down from the back of the throat all the way down into the stomach very, very quickly. And food should then stay in the stomach and shouldn't come back up. There are lots of different causes of difficulties with swallowing. If your pet is having difficulties with swallowing, your vet may recommend testing such as x-rays, fluoroscopy, which is like a video x-ray where we feed your dog food with a contrast dye to see how it goes down. We may look at doing things like CT or MRI, and we may look at doing things like endoscopy to have a look at the esophagus and stomach. If your pet has regurgitation or difficulty with swallowing, this may put them at an increased risk for having complications such as aspiration pneumonia, which is where food saliva or water goes down the wrong way into the lungs. To assist with swallowing disorders, sometimes we will recommend feeding from a height feeding different types of food or feeding in special chairs. What we need to remember is that because a dog stands on four legs, their esophagus as it goes through the chest is horizontal rather than vertical like it is in a person who's sitting up when they're eating. Because having the esophagus vertical uses gravity to help food go down, we may recommend in particular doing upright feeding where we make the esophagus sit in a more vertical manner. We may recommend trialling different types of food, as some dogs, depending on their condition, may tolerate liquid foods, softer foods, chunks or meatballs, or potentially harder foods like kibble, actually better. If we recommend doing upright feeding, this may include hand feeding from a height. Um, it may include feeding on a table surface, where we get the dog to put their front feet up on a table and eat off of a table or it may include using specialised chairs or harnesses to help hold a dog. For a smaller dog like Daisy, we may recommend just holding them and holding them in an upright position like this, kind of like a baby, to help the esophagus sit in an upright position and for food to go down into the stomach normally. Often after feeding, we may actually recommend that they stay in, a heart, in an upright position for up to 10 to 15 minutes after feeding. You can sometimes use baby carriers or customised carriers for smaller dogs. For larger dogs, we'll often use what's called a Bailey chair. A Bailey chair is a special chair that makes the dog sit in an upright position to have their meal. And then we can keep them in that chair for up to 10 to 15 minutes afterwards. This is quite a long time and we often need to find a way to stimulate them or keep them entertained during this time period to allow them to tolerate it well and not become averse to sitting in the chair or having time spent in there. For some dogs, we may recommend feeding multiple smaller meals a day, and for other dogs, we may recommend a more normal feeding regime. In terms of feeding type, for dogs with difficulty swallowing or difficulties keeping food down, we will always recommend avoiding bones, as these may cause obstructions or further problems. If your dog during feeding is coughing or spluttering or you're worried that they have had some sort of complication, it is best to stop straight away and contact your vet. For some dogs, we may recommend hand feeding as this allows us to control the speed, gives more time for food to go down one piece at a time and may give us better control over how your dog eats and the position that they're in for eating. For your, for your dog's specific case, your vet will talk to you about how we optimise the feeding regime for your pet and whether this includes using chairs, upright feeding, hand feeding and what type of food is best to use. Once we have a regime that works, it is best to be, stick to this very strictly even if it seems like things are going really well and if you want to change away from that feeding regime, it's really important that you speak to us about how to do so safely. If you'd like any further information regarding this, please don't hesitate to contact us here at Veterinary Specialist Services.